So, let's get started. First, let's go a bit closer to one of the spheres and we'll go here where I'll have my custom brushes. So, essentially, if you wanted to use uh, one of your brushes for a blending, you probably have some idea like why you want to use that brush. Maybe it has a nice texture or something else. So, let's say I want to use this brush. It's a very basic cube brush. And so, what do I do? First, I uh, duplicate it. And let's say it's cube brush blender. Uh, as you can see, I already have like one blending brush variant of it, but let's make a new one. Okay, there I have it. So, what do I need to do? Okay, uh, first I'll go to this wrench icon, click it, and then go to ink. So, uh, here I have a number of options, and I'm going to enable all of them. So you can see it pops up this small eye, and they appear under here. Bam! So, first of all, uh, blending mode. So you can see we have three different modes here. Blending, running color, and smear. And well, the names might already give you a kind of an exception. Ex exception. So, except, not exception, but expectation of what they might do. So, <clears throat> we go first to amount of paint and set it to zero. Uh, <laughs> what amount of paint does is that it adds uh, color from the color rate that you have to your uh, make color mixing and blending. So, well, actually, like if we put a bit of amount of paint and we have this light color here and we wanted to like make the dark area a bit lighter, then I could use that. So, it's applying the color I have selected the area so that's essentially its only function and then it the uh, density of paint adjusts how thick, uh, how opaque the uh, light color is and so but just for blending we're going to set the amount of paint to zero and first setting we have here is uh, actually, let's not go there first yet. I'll just set it to like this medium setting. And let's go. So, first of all, what does blending actually do? What does it look like? So, I uh, let's drag here. Okay. So, as you can see, essentially what blend does is that it takes the colors within this color wheel, and it paints with uh, something that is kind of like an average of all the colors inside the area. And that's that's blend. But I could do this kind of blue, 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 blue. And this is this isn't really going to be a tutorial on how to like uh, do blending of colors and how to paint. This is essentially we're going to go over the tools so you can see what kind of options you have within the software and what kind of things you can do. And now, color stretch. If we put it to max, we can see it does this. Okay, so if we like start from here, it does can get this like long strands. If we have color stretch set to minimum, it blends in much better. So if you want to push the paint around more, you want a higher color stretch, and if you want to blend it more than you want a uh, low color stretch essentially and you go can go like blah 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 and yeah that's essentially blend blend mode uh brush density it's another option here it's basic uh basic brush option but if we change it here we can get this kind of uh a bit like a more opaque more gradual effect the blending so that's also something to keep in mind while you explore these kinds of things. And I personally I would really like recommend exploring the settings. See, see for yourself what they do and see if there's something that you like particularly. So we have done that. Let's go to our next sphere. And to the next blending mode or color mixing mode, which is 
running color. Blend, blending was the previous color, but basically this is all the blending of colors together. So again, amount of paint, zero. Uh, the density of paint, the amount here doesn't matter at all as long as the amount of paint is set to zero. So whatever. Uh, again, color stretch, some medium amount, and uh, this probably this setting here, intensity of blur, it probably is set to automatic at first when you take this option. So let's try with that at first and see what it does. So uh, the name, amount of blur, intensity of blur. So that kind of like maybe cues you in or what kind of tool this is. So as you can see, we're essentially blurring the colors together. So this really soft blending effect, kind of like an airbrushy thing. And if you make a, like a really big brush, yeah. So you, you see, you see. And uh, and if you're actually wondering, like uh, here it took like some uh, background color from here, so we can paint that back. But uh, I have this set set layers set up so so that I have this basic sphere on this layer. And then I have a clipping mask on the layer above it. So you can see if I release the clipping mask, all the colors go all around. And if I create a clipping mask, it essentially reduces everything that you're drawing, limits them to the area that's been painted below. So that way you can uh, control your painting much better. Okay, but yeah, uh, running color, this is essentially a blurring tool. Uh, so we go to the other option in the intensity of blur where it's fixed value so we can change the value of the blur so if we go very high we have 150 and we can see it's it's almost almost like blending now it's really strong but then if we go like to this kind of a medium level okay now it's much more blurry nice if we go to this really low value Okay, it's doing something, but it's really, really mild. And again here, let's set it back to automatic and see what color stretch affect how color stretch affects what we are doing here. So again, we get these long strands, and if we set color stretch to a minimum, we get this like it doesn't really you can barely see we get these lines, but they're really blur like really quickly in. So we can affect how much we want the color to be picked up and moved around again and it produces these different kinds of effects you can see here and again with brush density we can get also kind of like reduced blurring and more violent <laughs> violent blurring blurring so yeah that is running color mode the middle one and then we'll go to the last sphere and the last mode, which is called smear. Uh, you can see the density of paint has already been like turned off completely with this. Uh, let's set color stretch to medium again. And let's see. Okay, it's doing kind of like what the uh, bl blend mode was doing, but it's it kind of picks up. It doesn't show like smear, it's kind of like Photoshop smear. It's kind of, it has this a little of opac opacity to it. Wait, what's my opacity? Okay, my opacity is at 100. So, well, if I press, I've got this uh, pressure sensitivity on. You can see it from here. And pen pressure. Then it's really hard, but then it's kind of like this soft, kind of opaque. We apply more color stretch here. Okay. Let's see. And you can see it's kind of like, it blends in a lot more to the stuff it goes into than the blend mode. With a low color stretch, what does it do? Well, it's pretty the same, you know. It, it's not very visible. Well, you can see, like, okay, it disappears a bit more quickly. And yeah, that's essentially that's mirror mode. So basically, if you're painting, what you would want to do is, if you want to get a different, uh, certain kind of an effect, you would change the tool change the type of tool you're using and here like i made a separate tool that's a blending brush but you can just like click the color mixing mode off and you can again like paint normally 
So you could use one brush and just click this here off, on, off, on, off. But I find it myself a lot handier of having a separate tool here. Now, let's take a look. That's the bit. That's the basic, like, how to make a blending brush. Let's see a couple of uh, interesting things around here. So, uh, I use this basic cube brush here. But let's see if we use this, I have this uh, case master brush, which is from, I think it's from the like clip studio, like the store. And we go back to the blending mode. So we can see this brush, it leaves this like hairy lines here. So it has some texture, it has more texture to it. Brush. So we can see how the texture affects the uh, level of blending we have how it's visible and this is like this is the advantage if you want to use like a normal brush for blending you can adjust its shape and texture and you and you can also get like easily here in the same panel and well you could move the brushes around and all kinds of stuff but this is the tutorial about that stuff uh, yeah so yeah blending mode textured brush we get this kind of like a painterly really feel to it maybe it's nice uh let's show you what the textured brush does with the blending mode or well the uh well yeah you know the softer running color so okay but you can still see like it's got this bit of those hairs there it's not that much of a blurry thing well it is kind of blurry but it has some character to it lines up here this is really so like already so planted it's kind of hard to see but you can pick them up like here and here and there's the line and yeah and with let's see test with the last tool again where we have this texture on so okay yeah you can see like those like you really like see those lines with the smear tool was it smear tool? Yeah, it was the smear tool. Good. If I had said the wrong name, it would be really embarrassing at this point. So, and another thing that you want to pay attention to when you are like blending, I said this is the blending tutorial, but whatever. Uh, it's like the size of the brush, because if I have like this big brush and I go here, you can see you got a really like different kind of like. <laughs> it, it looks actually really ugly now when I use this big brush. Well, I don't know, maybe someone might like that. And if I have a textured brush, it essentially also magnifies the texture. So we have got a lot of these hairs here and other kinds of stuff. If I use the cup, cup cube brush and make a bigger brush, it's not that visible. You can still see it leaves this kind of like jaggy lines here, like where the cubes melt into each other. And yeah. Essentially, yeah, and I think that's essentially it, like, the basic way of using a brush for blending in Clip Studio Paint. And you could do this with essentially any brush you find online in the Clip Studio store. Try different kinds of, like, textures, more painterly textures, like, maybe uh, watercolor textures, uh, just basic hard brushes for different kinds of effects. And experiment, try the different modes, adjust the values, see what you get and what works for you. So I hope this has been useful. I'm Arthnoid and well, if this video gets sub great subscriptions and likes, I might make more of these long form videos. So if this was helpful, you want to learn how to use your art tools better, then please subscribe, like, do all that YouTube stuff, and maybe we'll see each other again. <laughs>